Let's see, a half a volt per division. I got one, two, three, four divisions. That's two volts peak to peak. That doesn't seem right. What the heck's going on here? In today's video, we'll take a look at the top five reasons your oscilloscope voltage readings might appear wrong, but really might not be. We're talking about the five most common mistakes that are made by new users, novices, and even professionals in using oscilloscopes. Let's go take a look. Why are my readings off by a factor of 10? This most often happens when you're using uh, 10x probes or 1x probes and you're not properly accounting for them in the scope settings. Uh, take a look at uh, my video number 9 to talk about uh, 10x probes and what they are. Let's take a look at how this can happen. Now I've got a 10x probe uh, sitting on the scope here and it's probing a signal that uh, should be 2 volts peak to peak. But if I look at my, my vertical scale setting that's 50 millivolts of division so I'm looking at 200 millivolts peak to peak. I'm off by a factor of 10. And that's because the scope is not accounting for the factor of 10x of the probe. Many oscilloscopes and probes don't have a way of communicating the fact that I've got a 10x probe attached. This particular probe does not have any way of telling the scope. It's just a simple BNC connector. Uh, there are 10x probes, however, that do have a sense pin that uh, scopes properly equipped, like this one, with a sense ring around the BNC connector, will properly detect a 10x probe. You'll notice when I plug this probe in that the scale indicator on the vertical control knob changes, in this case from 50 millivolts to uh, a half a volt per division. I'm probing that same signal, and now it's properly showing a half a volt per division and giving me the proper 2 volt peak to peak reading. Scopes such as this entry-level TDS-2000 does not have the sensing ring around the uh, input connectors for the vertical channels. So even if I plug that 10x probe with the indicator ring on here, uh, the vertical scale wouldn't change. But they do provide a means through the vertical channel menu to tell, to tell the scope what probe you've got attached. In this case it says 10x. And I can cycle through 10x, 100x, 1000x, or 1x. So again, it's really up to you to ensure that uh, the probe attenuation that you've got set on the scope matches the attenuation of the probe. With a 10x probe, set it to 10x. If you're using a 1x probe or direct connection, make sure you set it to 1. But this is the most common way that you get uh, the 10x errors in amplitude. Now why are my readings off by just a factor of 2? Now in this case, I'm, I'm seeing a 2 volt peak-to-peak -peak signal on my scope, but I've set my brand new signal generator to 1 volt peak to peak. Why the factor of 2 difference? Now this happens most often when connecting a signal or function generator right to the input of a scope. And the reason is the generator has a 50 ohm output impedance and is expecting to see a 50 ohm load, but the scope is high impedance. So instead of seeing the 50 ohm load, you've got a high impedance load and you don't get that voltage divider effect between the 50 ohm output impedance and the 50 ohm load. So the output is essentially double what you set it to. Now there are two ways to deal with this. One is to put a 50 ohm through ter terminator on the end of the coax cable and now the amplitude of the signal is going to be appropriate because the generator is seeing the expected 50 ohm load. Or go back to the function generator and tell it what load impedance you're actually applying at the end of the coax, whether it's 50 ohms, high impedance, or something else. By doing that, the generator will then show you the actual voltage that will appear at your load. Again, you can check out video number 137 to get more detail on this. Why are all my readings just a little bit lower than they should be? Now there's a couple reasons this can happen, but one very common reason, for, especially on these analog scopes, is right here. Typically concentric with the volts per division knob is a variable amplitude control knob, which actually varies the amplitude in effectively an uncalibrated way. In fact, you'll notice on this scope, the uncal light is now lit up. Now, in order to have this scale be the appropriate scale, that VAR knob needs to be turned all the way clockwise and typically clicked into a detent position. And now you're in a calibrated volts per division. Uh, rotating it below that will go into an uncalibrated uh, setting. Now, why would you want to do that? I talk about this in video number 66 when making a rise time measurement on, the, on these old analog scopes. But the bottom line is, check that volts per division vernier control and be sure it's in the calibrated position. Now why are my high frequency signals reading a little bit low? Alright, so here I've got a 90 megahertz signal going into my oscilloscope here. I've got my 50 ohm termination at the input. I'm at 200 millivolts of division, but I'm reading about 800 millivolts peak to peak. 
and my signal generator is set to one volt peak to peak. Why am I not seeing the full amplitude? Here's where you have to be careful with bandwidth ratings. The scope I'm using here is a 100 megahertz scope. So you say, well, I got a 90 megahertz signal. Shouldn't be a problem. Well, the reality is, is that bandwidth rating refers to the frequency at which the amplitude is down by 3 dB or maybe a little bit less. So that roll off is relatively smooth. So when you start approaching that bandwidth limit, the amplitude response is not going to be at full amplitude. In fact, the old rule of thumb was that the scope and probe bandwidth should exceed the signal frequency by a factor of 5 to give you less than a 2% error, kind of operate down in this portion of the curve. In my case, I was running a 90 megahertz signal into a 100 megahertz scope. I'm operating way down here, so the signal is being depressed by the uh, frequency response of the scope. Now videos 25, 69, and 70 all deal with oscilloscope bandwidth ratings and how to interpret them. And finally, why are my probed signals slightly higher or lower in amplitude than they should be? Now here I've got two 10x probes probing the same signal, but we can see that there are different amplitudes. It might make you think that uh, one of the channels on my scope is not properly calibrated, but this is most often caused by not properly compensating the probes. Compensation of 10x probes is critical, and it's really probably the most ignored and most overlooked cause of amplitude errors when making measurements with a scope. Uh, my video number 206 goes into some detail to talk about how important that is. But let's take a look at it here quickly. Now the probe on channel 2 is properly compensated. I'm getting the right uh, voltage reading here. But probe number 1 is not properly compensated. And let's take a look at how much of a difference it can make. So if I stick the uh, screwdriver in here and start comp uh, adjusting the compensation capacitor, look at how much I can vary the amplitude of that signal just by changing the compensation of the probe. Now I've connected the 10x probe from channel 1 to the probe compensation signal. And from this improper compensation, I can see that the higher frequency components are going to be abnormally high. They're not going to read properly. So if we adjust the compensation adjustment here, if we were improperly adjusted this way, then the higher frequency components will be lower in amplitude than they should be. By properly adjusting the compensation to get a nice uh, perfect squ square wave here, now when we connect up to our 10 kilohertz signal that we were looking at, we can see now that these two 10 kilohertz signals are now at the same amplitude. Well, so there you have it, the top five reasons your scope voltage readings might appear wrong. Uh, all of the links to the videos that I've mentioned for each of these five reasons will be in the descri video description down below, if, as well as a PDF copy of these notes. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so, and be sure to ring the little bell that's down below the video to get alerted when I post a new video. Thanks again as always for watching.